Red Dot Forum's coverage of NAB 2017 is made possible by Leica Store Miami. Hi, this is David Farkas with Red Dot Forum. We're reporting from NAB 2017. I'm here in the CW Sonder Optics slash Leica booth with Seth Emmons. He's the global marketing manager for CW Sonder Optic. And if you don't know, they are the ones who make the incredible Leica Cine lenses. We're going to talk about the new Leica Cine Thalia lenses, which are just introduced at this show. Yeah, thank you, David. Thanks for coming by, um, making the trip from Miami. Yeah, so uh, we're happy to be introducing this new line of lenses this year. We've seen a trend in cinematography toward larger sensors. Um, and so there's really not many optics out there for these larger sensors. So what we did is we introduced the Leica Thalias, which cover pretty much every large format digital sensor from Alexa 65 down to Red Vista Vision, Panavision, all the way down to Super 35. Um, and it's a series of spherical prime lenses um, based on, roughly based on the Leica S series of optics. What we did is we started with the, the Leica S formula and the, those lenses cover a 54 millimeter diagonal and we needed to get to 60. So we had to do a lot of redesigning, making some elements larger, changing the mechanics completely. Um, we even added a brand new focal length of 55, which doesn't exist in the, the S world. Um, so even though that's where the lenses came from, they really have evolved over the development to kind of become their own own thing. Wouldn't be bad to have a 55 in the S line. <laughs> Maybe I'll talk to Stefan about that. I think you know who to talk to about that. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, what kind of changes were made uh, from the standard S designs to bring them into the cinema world? You said already that the image circle had to be increased from the 54 of the S mm -hmm. uh, Pro format to cover these larger sensors, but uh, you also made diff uh, mechanical improvements as well to the, the focus, the aperture. Can you tell me a little about that? Sure. So um, we did a completely new iris design, different from anything we've ever done and honestly different from anything out there because it maintains circular shape through all aperture stops. So you stop it down all the way to a 16, it's still a perfect circle, wow. which is, is kind of unheard of and it's makes a really cool effect when you have a deep depth of field and you also see these round bokehs that you're not used to. Um, it feels kind of really cinematic and interesting. Um, in addition to that, we, we totally rebarreled the lenses because these are mechanical. There's no uh, electronics in them. So we took all the motors out of the, the S design, did a 270 degree focus rotation with a, a cam focus, and uh, we added the we did all the housings as 95 millimeter diameter, which matches the Sumalux and Sumacron lenses as well, and our Cine Macro Lux diopters. Um, and so in addition to that, let's see, what else do we do? They have a threaded front, so a 92 millimeter filter can be screwed in, either a protective filter or an ND. Yeah, and, and they're, you know, they're more robust. They're, they're built for a production environment, so they're made of aluminum, they're nice and strong, durable lenses. Awesome, yeah, I mean, the S lens is already pretty rugged. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no, no hating on the S lenses at all. But these are these are these fit in with the other Cine stuff that we have. So the feel, the look, the everything is consistent with all the other Leica Cine products. Sure, and that's great because if you're rigged up for one, you're rigged up for a Sumalux, mm -hmm. and then you change cameras, but you want to keep the same rigging, matte box, everything, follow yep. focus. It's all consistent. Yeah, even the focus and iris ring locations match between Sumalux, Sumacron, and Thalia. So if for any reason you're switching lenses, all your, all your focus motors or follow focus can stay in the same place. That's awesome. It's really well thought out. Yeah, trying to be consistent, you know. <laughs> and, and then that was actually a goal initially from the, the original Sumalux Cs and then the Sumacron Cs is to have that, except for a few outliers, the exact same lens barrel, the exact same focus rotation, the exact same aperture rotation, everything yeah. all the same across the board. Yeah. And then, then the 135 came. And yeah, so the, yeah, the 135 Sumalux, I mean, uh, doing a, a T1.4 lens at 135 yeah. focal length, you just can't make it smaller. You know, it's, right. you're, you're running up against physics, and physics can be really mean. Well, as I say, physics always wins. Physics always wins, absolutely. So we did the best we could. Um, it is a standard, I think, 114 millimeter front, which matches a lot of other accessories. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did make a 16 mil 1.4 Sumalux that's still 95, and we're introducing our 15 millimeter Sumacron, which is 
a T2.0, still 95 millimeter front diameter. That's cool. Well, uh, the uh, the Thalios look look interesting, and uh, let's go talk about the other stuff. Okay, cool. All right, so now we're talking about the the Sumicron C. So obviously these have been in the marketplace for a few years now. Yeah, we're at uh, I think around three years since we've had the Sumicrons in the market. Um, we've been steadily adding adding new focal lengths. Um, so we're actually introducing a brand new focal length here at the show, which I had mentioned was the 15 millimeter T2.0. So that one's right up here it's um, same diameter as all the others 95 it's just a half inch longer so if, if people are familiar with the 135 Sumacron same dimensions as that and how are the distortion characteristics on a lens that's so wide uh, it's really well controlled so we're showing it on a um, red 8k super 35 mm -hmm. sensor which is one of the largest super 35 plus sensors out there so you can see full coverage and the, the minimal amount of distortion that it has. This one has been hotly anticipated. We've had a lot of people waiting for this lens and wanting to, wanting to try this out because you know wide wide angle is really popular right now and wide angle close focus. So yeah, um, we've been wanting this one to get out soon. And we're happy to have it here. Nice. And uh, what are you holding here? This. Uh silver looking lens yeah so in traditional Leica fashion you know you have the black lens you have the silver lens mm -hmm. um, we didn't actually make this so it's, it's a Sumacron but uh, one of our rental house partners and one of our service centers uh, third-party service centers got together and decided to do a experiment so they took some Sumacrons and they said all right these are very cinematic to begin with how can we push that more toward like a vintagey cinematic look mm -hmm. So they took apart all the lenses, came up with some special recipes on coding, uncoding, recoding elements, up to five per focal length, and built what they call the classic crons. So um, the camera division, which is a rental house in Los Angeles, is the, the customer that these are gonna be rented out of, and they were modified by Duclos lenses. That's pretty cool. They're really cool. I mean, you know, as a, as a lens company, you have a vision of what the look is gonna be of a lens, but it really shouldn't ever be, you know, antagonistically strict about that. So to see somebody come up with a new option to, to give a new look to something is really pretty cool. If someone's looking to get into the Sumacrons, uh, what are the most popular focal lengths, sort of uh, the, the bread and butter lenses? Sure, like the, the core set that most people get is six lenses. So it's 18, 25, 35, 50, 75, and 100. Um, some markets they'll swap out the 100 for the 135 and just leave that gap between 75 and 135. Um, but that's kind of regional, it just depends on the shooting characteristics of the person. And then of course they can fill in the gaps where they want to. Yeah, so we have some great fill-in focal lengths like the 21 and 29 are the first ones we came out with which really give you a lot of options in that wider angle to mid-wide field. Mm -hmm. um, we have a 40 millimeter which is relatively new, um, just started delivering recently. And then, uh, like I said, the 135, and now the 15. Cool. Yeah, definitely a full range. Oh yeah, it's a full and growing family. Growing. So, <laughs> well, where could you possibly grow now? <laughs> we just we just grew it with the 15. Um, we haven't announced any plans for new focal lengths at the moment. Um, we're taking suggestions if people have any, um, especially if they're placing bulk orders. But. No, at the moment we're we're pretty happy to add the 15. We feel like this covers a really good range, and if we were going to add in, um, you know, it would make sense probably in the middle somewhere. Sure, and the same with the Sumalux line. Would you say is pretty complete right now, or looking could, to grow? I can say the Sumalux line is complete right now. Um, okay. Yeah, there's no plans to expand that right now. We're from 16 to 135. Mm -hmm. There's 12 lenses in that set. Um, so with the Suma Crons, I think we're at 11 right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Sumalux, we're at 12. All right, so uh, next thing, uh, let's talk about the lenses that are now just starting to ship, which is the M0.8. Yes, so the Leica M0.8 lenses are based on the Leica M series optics. Um, they are completely 100% the optics from the M lenses, the Sumalux 21, 24, 28, 35, and then the Noctilux 50 millimeter. Um, what we did, though, is we changed the mechanical design. So we added the proper gear ring pitch for traditional cinema accessories. We also added um, screw-on front hoods for them with an 80 millimeter consistent diameter so they're easier to use with consistent accessories. And that hood also has a 77 mil thread front on it. So one of the main uses for these lenses is going to be compact small cameras. Mm -hmm. So being able to screw in 
filters, NDs, or even you know look filters, and keep a small camera package without a matte box is is going to be a pretty big deal for some people. Yeah, that'll keep the whole package really compact. So if you have action cameras or, or handheld tracking shots, things like that, where you want to keep the package really tight, uh, the M's could really do that for you. Yeah, and drones and gimbals where you need lightweight as well as compact. Mm -hmm. um, so right now we have, you know, it's obviously you can put this on the Leica M lenses. We keep the Leica M mount. Mm -hmm. So you can put it on any M cameras on the SL with the adapter. Um, you can also use adapters to go to Sony's E mount. Um, Red Digital Cinema does make a Leica M mount for their cameras, and we're making a, a modified OLPF filter that the cameras need to use the wider lenses on it. And then we are showing here for the first time a Leica M mount on an Alexa mini camera, which has never been done before and was almost mechanically impossible, but we were able to make it work with about a millimeter to spare. Um, so now you can put these lenses on a mini as well, which is, again, you know, keeping it very compact. Possible limitation with the uh, with the M lenses, of course, because they're meant for a rangefinder. They're designed with a minimum focus of 0.7 meters or with an octalux a meter. Right. And in a lot of cinema applications, you want to get closer than that. So, what what's the solution? Is it used to use a 77 millimeter close up? Is it to use the the macro lux system with an adapter, a step up? Right. So there's there's two ways to do it. Like you said, you can use a 77 millimeter filter um, or a you know close up to to get there. Um, but because they have the 80 millimeter diameter, you can use the macro lux with a step ring. So we're, we actually are showing a step ring here that goes from 80 to 95. Okay. And now with the macro luxes, we introduced uh, a 0.5 macro lux, which brings your close focus in, but still gives you a lot of, of long focus as well, depending on the, the focal length. And the way that diopters generally work is the, the shorter the focal length, the more you have toward infinity anyway. So on these wider lenses, you should be able to focus relatively close, but keep a midfield focus as well. Sure, maybe not infinity, but for most applications, yeah. you don't really need infinity. Not right. for doing character-driven stuff. stuff. They're going to be in the foreground, mid-ground. Yeah, and the other benefit of that is, is with a uh, diopter like that, because you know the out-of-focus elements are accentuated. Mm -hmm. If you still want that shallow field feel, you can stop down the lens to a you know 2.8 or even 4, mm -hmm. but with the diopter you're still getting that shallow feel like you're much more wide open, but sure. you know, you're preserving more focus that way. That's pretty cool. Now obviously this set goes from 21 to 50. Are there any plans to go adapt any of the other lenses and, and go longer than 50? Yeah, we're considering it. Uh, we've had a lot of requests to go longer, particularly the, um, the 75 and the 90. Um, so we're considering it now. We haven't announced any plans, but that's definitely what people have asked. Sure, then it would round it out, round out the set. And those are those are starting to ship now and sort of month of May start rolling out, right? Yes, that's correct. So we are starting to ship now. We had our first set of them go, our first batch of them go out. Um, I think we either have some in stock or coming into stock very soon. Uh, but yeah, we're now in serial production, so they'll be coming regularly. And with the, the Alexa Mini Mount, just around the corner and the uh, the red OLPF development finally locked down, we're going to be able to see these expand out to different camera formats. I like the this, the synergy between CW Sonder Optic, like a Cine, and like a camera, because so many people, especially cinematographers, a lot of them have like M systems, yeah, or like S systems, and they love that look that they get with the M glass, with the S glass. So to be able to match that up and put it into a real cine form factor, yeah. use fact, use case, uh, I think is a really great synergy between the two companies. Uh, that's all part of the, the, Leica, the new Leica Pro division, mm -hmm. uh, that, that kind of collaboration, right? Yeah, I mean, we've had, the, you know, we, we've had this request since CW started as a, a sister company to Leica Camera to, you know, we had cinematographers for years who were M shooters and, and more recently S shooters that wanted that look from cinema. So our, our original couple of sets, the Sumalux and Sumacron, purpose built for that, but from the ground up development. So now we're looking at more of a synergy between the companies and bringing the existing optical technologies from photo into the cinema world with you know our own modifications to them. Whether it's you know a little bit lighter weight like the the um, M series, the M 0.8s, or whether it's a real full scale overhaul like the Thalia's. Sure, well, that sounds great. Yeah. Well, Seth, thanks so much for uh, talking with us here. Thank you for coming by.
So stay tuned for more coverage from NAB 2017.